All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at the techniques I use to rearrange equations when I'm trying to calculate different quantities. So before we get started, there's two things we kind of need to know about rearranging equations. The first is you must always apply the same operation to both sides. So if we multiply one side by two, we have to multiply the other side by two. Or if we square root one side, we have to square root the other side. So we always have to do the same operation. The second thing is you need to know the operators and their inverses or their opposites because that's key in deciding what to do to rearrange equations. So those are the, the, the kind of the fundamentals that we need to know. So let's just quickly talk about doing the same operation to both sides. So let's say we have this very generic equation. Quantity A is equal to quantity B plus quantity C. If we want to apply the same operation to both sides, so in this case, my operation I've chosen is multiply by two, I have to do the same thing to both sides. So we're gonna get two A on the left equals two B plus two C on the right hand side. So we've done the same operation to both sides. Let's now look at the operators and their inverses. So this isn't, isn't an exhaustive list. Uh, there are definitely more operators, but these are the most common ones you come across with equations. So, the plus and minus are called inverses of each other. Um, so a times and divide are another set of inverses. So essentially they do the opposite to each other. And squaring and square rooting do the opposite. We could also add it in there cube and cube rooting. Once you get onto more advanced physics, uh, taking the exponential of and then taking the log of things are opposites. But these are our basic ones. Okay. So... We ha now have the knowledge that we need to start rearranging equations. So let's see how it actually works in practice. So let's go back to our very general equation. Quantity A equals quantity B plus quantity C. So if you know A is 4 and B is 3, what is C? Now, first off, I know you should be able to see straight off that C is 1. OK, um, so, but we're going to see the process by which we actually calculate C. So we can do it for ones which aren't simple as well. So. If we want to calculate C, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rearrange the equation to make C the subject. What does that mean? It means having C all by itself on one side of the equation. That's what we're looking for. So once you've done that, we can then substitute in the numbers because A is 4 and B is 3, and then we can calculate what C is. So that's what we're aiming for. So how do we go about rearranging the equation? So first thing you ask yourself is we're trying to make c the subject what operator is currently acting on c so you can see in this equation b is being added to c so that's the operation that's acting the next question you ask yourself is okay so what should we be doing to both sides well we're going to do the opposite so we're going to subtract b so that's why we needed to know what the inverses were so that's how we decide what to do Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to subtract b from both sides of the equation, remembering we have to do the same operation to both. So on the left, we're going to end up with a minus b, and on the right, we're going to have b plus c, and then we're going to subtract b from it. So why do we do the opposite? Well, this is the useful part. These b's now cancel each other out, because we've got b minus b, which gives you nothing. So that's why we wanted the opposite operation. So you can see that what we end up with is C is equal to A minus B. Now what we can do is we can plug our numbers in. So A is 4, B is 3, and we can see C is equal to 1, exactly as we saw at the start. Okay, so what if the equation is a different form? So A, quantity A is now equal to quantity B times quantity C, often written for short with the B and C next to each other, or maybe with a dot in between two. Okay, so... Let's go through the same process again. What operator is currently acting on C? Well, it's being multiplied by B. So what we're gonna to do to both sides, we're gonna divide by B, the opposite of multiplying by B. Let's actually see that. So we divide both sides by B. So we're gonna get A divided by B on the left, and we're gonna get BC, B times C divided by B on the right. And this is where using the inverse is useful because we can cancel out the b's. And we end up with c is equal to a divided by b. 
So we can plug those numbers in and we can see that C is equal to 2. And I think you could have seen from the original expression, yes, 2 times 2 is 4. So that makes sense. OK, so let's try a third type of equation. Quantity A is equal to quantity B divided by quantity C. And we're trying to calculate C, so the thing on the bottom line. So we're going to add an additional layer to the method we've been using so far. So if the thing that we want is on the bottom line, the first thing we're going to do is multiply both sides by that quantity to move it onto the top line. So let's actually see what that looks like. If we multiply both sides by C, we're going to end up with A times C is equal to B, because the C's on the right cancel each other out. And now we've got an equation in a similar format to the one we've seen before. So now what we do is we see, OK, C is being multiplied by A. So we're going to divide by A because that's the opposite. So we end up with uh, AC over A is equal to B over A. And we can cancel out the A's. So C is B divided by A. So it's 2 divided by 4. So C is actually a half or 0.5 in this case. So that's our additional layer that we can use in expressions. OK, so what I've tried to do is summarize uh, what I've been doing into a flow diagram to work through rearrange equations. So the first question I ask myself is, is the quantity you want on the bottom line? If it is, multiply both sides by that quantity like we've just seen. No, we can skip straight to the next step. We ask what operator is acting on it, and we do the opposite to both sides. Then we ask, is it on its own yet? No, we can just repeat that step until it is, or a yes, we can calculate our final answer. So this kind of summarizes the process that I've been using. So let's actually see this in operation with some real equations rather than just A's, B's and C's. So an object has weight force on the moon of 3.2 newtons, its mass is 2 kilograms, calculate the gravitational field strength on the moon. So the equation is weight force is equal to mass times gravitational field strength. We want to calculate gravitational field strength. So we look at the equation and is it on the bottom line? Nope. So we can skip that step. What operator is acting on it? It's being multiplied by the mass. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide by the mass. So let's do that to both sides. And we get this expression here. We can cancel out our masses and we get gravitational field strength is the weight divided by the mass. We can plug our numbers in, so 3.2 newtons divided by 2 kilograms gives us 1.6 newtons per kilogram. That's the gravitational field strength on the moon, considerably weaker than that on Earth, which is about 10. Let's have a look at a different format of the equation. So the density, we have density of 1 gram per centimeter cubed, mass of 10 grams, calculate its volume. So density is equal to mass divided by a volume. So we want to calculate volume, so the first question we ask ourselves is, is it on the bottom line? Yes, it is. So we're going to multiply both sides by volume uh, to fix that problem. Then we ask, is it on its own? No. So we're going to look at it, and so it's being multiplied by density. So we divide both sides by density, and we're going to get volume is mass divided by density. Once we've got that, we can plug our values into the equation and we end up with 10 centimeters cubed as our volume. Okay. So this is what, how I want you to think when you're approaching questions is go through this process and you should be uh, very effective at rearranging equations to calculate quantities. And these stages work regardless of the equation that you're dealing with. And you can even expand it to deal with squares and square roots and all the rest of it too.